videographers. After I posted my review of the Fujifilm X-T4, William asked if I could do a best settings video. Sure, that feels like a safe thing to do. So if you're going to shoot video, but don't have time to read the manual and fiddle around, here's a quick start guide for video novices. You and William will be on your way in about eight minutes. But then, if you have time to stick around, and I appreciate that every celebrity is busy using their home time to post much more compelling content than I've got. Anyway, stick around, and I'll share my preferred settings, my favorite hacks, and some advanced tips, including how to use F-Log. Now, I'm starting with the X-T4 in its default settings, using firmware 1.0. If you need to do a reset, you can reset the video settings or the setup independently. And I'm demonstrating with the XF 16 to 55 lens, Fuji's MKX series cinema lenses are better for pro video production. And I'm using the optional battery grip. It has some advantages, but certainly isn't necessary. The X-T4's high bit rates can use up memory cards quickly, so get large and fast cards. I'm using UHS-2 64GB cards, but 128 might be preferred. These are rated for 300 megabytes per second. And with two card slots, it's wise to fill them both. Using an external recorder is also an option. I'll cover that in the advanced section. I'm using an Atomos Ninja Inferno to record the screens that you'll see in this video. And I'll apologize that they're slightly cropped. It's a problem with many Fujifilm models in video mode. After backing up any information on the cards, format them. On the Save Data Setup screen, the X-T4 options select continuous recording from one card to another, or on both simultaneously as a backup. Sequential recording switches seamlessly from one card to the other, regardless of which you set as your primary video card, and when one card is full, you can take it out and replace it while you're recording. Use button settings to confirm that touchscreen is on, Use Screen Setup to select Large Indicators mode for the LCD. That makes settings easier to see. Set the mode switch under the shutter dial to Video. Set the shutter speed dial to 60 and lock it. Set the ISO dial to A and the focus mode switch to C, continuous. If your lens has an OIS switch, turn it on. If your lens has auto aperture, turn it off. If it has a marked aperture, Turn it to F4. To stop the screen from switching to the viewfinder when you're shooting on a tripod, use the View Mode button to select LCD only. This can be particularly useful when the screen is swiveled forward to do selfies. Use Power Management to adjust the auto power off so the screen doesn't power down as quickly. Performance boost on improves focus speed. The movie settings are nearly all independent of stills. The changes you make here apply only to video. There are a few exceptions, none are important. Now, for most projects, I'd recommend that you shoot in 4K. Even if you're going to be producing HD video, the quality is higher and you'll have the opportunity to zoom in up to two times while editing, if needed. I recommend the H.265 or High Efficiency Video Codec for better quality, and if you're going to be editing, use the All Intra setting, as that's easier on your computer's processor, it won't have to do as much reconstruction. That also offers the highest quality settings. Now, unless you're shooting for cinema, and I'll deal with that as an advanced option, use the 16 by 9 video aspect ratio. Use a frame rate of 30, nominally 2997, and with all intra, your only data option is 400 megabits, which eats a lot of card space. If that is a concern, go back, select long gop, and 200 or even 100 megabits. The quality loss here is minimal, particularly if you're producing for YouTube. 
30 is the frame rate in North America and other places, but the frame rate in many countries is 25. You may choose to use that to maintain compatibility with TV sets. 30 may seem better, but for 25 frame compatibility, I recommend you use 25 or 50. In the 30 frame countries, I don't feel that 60 is better unless you want slow motion. We'll get there later. Before recording, the display shows the amount of recording time available on the card or cards you have inserted. This is the time to adjust the data rate. With H.265 long op, 200 megabits, you'll be able to save about 40 minutes on a 64 gigabyte card, 80 minutes with two cards. Scroll down to the 4K output setting. The X-T4 can record internally, but also supports external recordings using the HDMI port. There is an option to record only externally. Make sure the SD card is at 4K. If you're shooting HD, that's a separate option. On the AF-MF tab, set Movie AF Mode to Area, so you can set the focus point. Multi is full autofocus. Press the joystick and set the size of the focus spot with the rear dial and position it for the shot. If you are shooting people, scroll down to turn face detection on. I use Eye Auto. If your aperture dial isn't marked, set it now. Turn the ring until the screen displays F4. Even though we set the shutter speed dial to 60, the back dial makes micro shutter speed adjustments. Check that it's 60 or adjust until it is. If the screen looks crowded and cluttered, use Setup, Screen Setup, to change the display custom settings. I find it useful to have the electronic level on as well as the histogram. And you can remove those items that you won't need. I use F4 as a default aperture, but you may wish to open it if the scene is dark or your lens supports a wider aperture, or close it to F11 or F16 if it's bright, or if you feel that a defocused background is distracting or undesirable for your shot. Uh, turn the ISO dial to auto if you expect changes in light. For manual ISO, turn the dial until the histogram is centered and then back off one or two clicks. Uh, that should give you a meter reading, screen left, about zero. But because the meter is multi, let your eye play a role and feel free to exercise your creativity. The image on screen should look good to you. Don't be a slave to the meter. Now, at this point, you may run into a problem if the scene is too dark after you've opened the aperture, setting the shutter to 1 over 30, as long as there's not a lot of movement will help. And if it's too bright and you've closed the aperture, you'll need an ND filter to get the exposure under control. Press the right side button on the control area to set the white balance. Now, it doesn't matter which white balance you choose as long as it looks good to you. Just don't use auto, as it will make editing difficult. Uh, press the left control button to select a film simulation. My default on the X-T4 is Classic Chrome, as it provides a softer, more subdued look that I like, but be your own cinematographer, and select a setting based on your taste and judgment. If you want black and white, select it here, uh, using either standard monochrome or the Acros film simulation. Now each has four color variants. And use mono color tone to add a blue or sepia tone to your footage. The audio default settings with the internal mics should be fine for ambient sound and for speaking to camera as long as you're close. I'm using an external shotgun mic. Now, while recording, do keep your eye on the right left side meter, but note that this is not available in the large display mode. If it's always above the midpoint, going into yellow and flashing red, go to the menu's audio tab. Change the mic level using the meters as reference. Uh, slightly too low is better than high as it's easier to turn the volume up if it's quiet than to reduce distortion if it's too loud. 
The X-T4's audio controls are quite sophisticated. You might also want to take advantage of the line level input to connect to an audio console, and, and there are wind and rumble filters. The USB-C port can output audio to headphones using an adapter. The optional battery grip includes a dedicated headphone port. Uh, while you're shooting, use touch or the joystick to guide the focus. And then in the top right, there's a button that controls touch focus. The AF setting will focus, area sets the area. Shot starts recording when you tap the screen or press the shutter to record. Either way, press the shutter to stop. And now you're ready to shoot. I do have one hack that everybody should be aware of, and that's to use the movie optimized control. Turn it on using the bottom right button. It disables all of the physical controls, so touch the on-screen button to set them. This enables silent control of the settings. Now, if you have a few more minutes, let me start the advanced section. Touch AF, the button upper right indicates it's on, is useful to switch focus from one subject to another, although there is a slight wobble at the end. And note that after you touch, AF in the upper right turns off, so it's no longer continuous. Press the button again to reactivate. Use AFC Custom to adjust the speed of the transition. The range from fast, which is fast, to slow is wide enough that it should suit any situation. Incidentally, the speed control only takes effect after you start recording. In most situations, I use manual focus, selected with the switch on the front. On the Focus tab, turn Focus Check on. Then, as soon as you turn the focus ring, the expanded view appears. Use the back dial to change the magnification the focus joystick to position, and the focus ring to focus. To reset to the full image, press the rear dial. Press and hold the back dial for peaking, the alternate focus check option. Use the menu to set the color and the sensitivity that you prefer. The colored lines indicate the object in focus. If you have cinematic aspirations, the X-T4 has your back. Let's switch the video settings to 4K DCI 17x9. This is the aspect ratio used for movie production. And 24 frames per second, the same frame rate used in motion picture film cameras. And just to show you that Fuji hasn't missed any detail here, purists can set the shutter speed to the exact 180 degree shutter used in motion picture film cameras, 1 over 48. Now, there's not much value in using these settings unless your video will be projected at 24 frames. For a cinematic look, concentrate on lighting. We've already talked about the histogram, but cinematographers like to refer to zebra for exposure. It's on tab one, choose left or right. Setting it to 100% will alert you to any parts of the scene that exceeds 100 on a waveform to keep your recordings broadcast legal. However, it's also useful to set it to 70%, as that's the usual setting for white skin. Then adjust the ISO accordingly. My zebra hack to turn it on and off quickly is to use button dial settings to configure it as the Fun 2 button. Then just press the Fun 2 button to cycle through the options. As long as we're being fussy, Let's set a custom white balance, which is super simple to do. Uh, select one of the three positions, press right, and aim at a gray or white card. Press the shutter, and then OK. Done. With the classic Chrome simulation, I use the tone curve, adjusting the highlight setting to minus two, as well as the shadow to minus two for a less contrasty image. And then the sharpness to minus four to reduce the crispy look typical of video. Again, uh, this is personal preference, and I find this is a good neutral starting point for color adjustments while editing. If you've selected Eterna, Fujifilm suggests that you increase the dynamic range to 400 to achieve the optimum results. That raises the ISO to a minimum of 640, so I'm using an ND filter to manage this scene. 
you'll need even more dynamic range if you shoot on a sunny day. With standard settings, I can choose either to expose properly for the bridge in the foreground or close down three stops to expose for the sky. That's more than the eight stops in the standard profiles. For that kind of dynamic range, there's F-Log, which can be activated for both internal and external recordings or independently. When shooting with F-Log, keep your histogram centered. This is F-Log as it comes from the camera. You'll need to apply a lookup table adjustment, usually called a LUT, and color grade this footage in post. And remember that for now, most displays can only handle six to eight stops. Let me do a quick demo and F-Log tutorial. With standard settings in Zebra at 100, this studio lit shot of the DSC Labs cam line chart has about eight stops of range, as do most objects that reflect light. You can see on the waveform that it's just short of 100 units. When I switch the scene to F-Log, it looks washed out on the screen, and the ISO has increased to 640, so to center the histogram, I'm irising down to 56. And on the waveform, you can see that the 8-stop range has been compressed to about two-thirds of its original dynamic range. That's great, as it allows greater overall range to be captured. Applying Fujifilm's free downloadable LUT to the scene in your video editor, I use Final Cut, restores some of the dynamic range, and I can grade it further, but some of the mid-range gradation is gone. So use F-Log only when your scene, because you're shooting outside in sunlight, requires. Then sample and experiment so that you have the exposure and the grading you're going to do in post figured out. One more thing. If you're shooting F-Log, use the screen setup to turn on F-Log View Assist, so the display on the LCD won't be so washed out. Uh, sorry, two more things. If you're recording on an external recorder, download and install the Fujifilm LUTs for the display. Like the View Assist, they don't affect the recording, just give you a better preview of what the final image will look like. Another option here is HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma. It's a dynamic range setting designed for screens that support HLG and can display the high dynamic range. Now, if your set doesn't, the image reverts to a standard profile. If you use this setting, you should use it for every shot in your video. Now, for handheld shooting, the xt 4s in-body stabilization can be configured in four steps. Off, which produces a predictably shaky result at 80 millimeters. In-body plus optical, as long as the lens supports it, which goes a long way to smoothing out an image. Then add digital for a shot that's nearly as steady as a tripod, but with a slight crop. And boost for an even steadier static handheld image. I mentioned that you might use the 60 frame mode for slow motion. Uh, that will enable you to edit playback to 50%. That's available in 4K and records audio. To slow the action further, use the full HD high speed record. Its 1080 HD resolution records without sound. MOS, as we used to say back in the previous millennium. Options here range from 2 to 10 times. Now, for time lapse, you'll have to use stills mode. Set the interval and the number of images, which can be infinite, meaning until the memory cards are full. You'll have to turn the stills into video using a computer. And here's my hack for this. Use 16 by 9 medium and JPEG only. That provides a video aspect ratio and smaller files, but bigger than the 8 megapixels needed for 4K video. Now, I'm using an Atomos Ninja recorder, which is connected to the HDMI port. This can record a higher quality image than the internal SD card, using a higher bit rate and 422 color. If you're using F-Log, doing color grading and creating high quality output, you'll appreciate those details. The output settings to the HDMI out, resolution and frame rate, switch when they're selected from the movie mode settings. For pro editing, timecode is available with multiple options to configure it to your needs. Uh, turn HDMI Rec Control on to use the camera shutter to start and stop the external recorder. Be aware that if you're also recording on SD cards, when the cards fill up, it will not only stop recording internally, but externally also. 
And note that if you select HDMI 4K only, there's no time limit to your recordings, except of course the storage capacity on the external recorder. I have the info display on, but turn it off for clean output for recording externally. There are multiple tally light options, which indicate that the camera is recording. Lights on the front and the back can glow or blink, or can be turned off completely. The X-T4 can be externally powered using USB-C. With the battery grip, I found it flaky with firmware 1.0. Now, If you are vlogging, use the remote app. But be aware that it's only capable of shooting at the 1080 HD setting. There is little danger of the X-T4 overheating in normal shooting conditions, but it may happen. It's not been warm enough in Canada to trigger the overheating icon. If you'd like to see some more video samples created using the settings that I've described, check out part two of my review of the X-T4. Uh, William, thanks for the suggestion. I hope that covers it. If not, please post relevant questions and civil comments below. I will read and reply. And this video was recorded in April 2020. I'm extending my hopes and best wishes to you, your family, and your friends. I hope you are well. And if you can do so safely, go out and shoot until your memory cards are full and your batteries are empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, I'd love to have you join me as a subscriber. Thanks.